Hey preppers, Rich Lang down here in the new bunker. Nothing fancy bunker, not like some of the other guys that have uh, prepping websites or 2A websites or survival websites that are always, you know, all that fancy stuff behind them. I ain't got time for that. I just want all my stuff right where I can get to it. I can grab it at a moment's notice and go. As you can tell, very organized, very put together. And that's kind of why, and a lot of people ask me all the time, Rich, what's with all these lists? Well, the lists are just a guide to help you get this to kick in and the light bulb to turn on above your head on what you need. Now, as we said with all of our lists, this is my list. This is, you know, I put it together with uh, uh, years of experience reading books, actually doing it, you know, going, you know, camping, you know, for two, three weeks at a time, hiking through the mountains and stuff like that, uh, from the fire department, from other websites, uh, talking to other survivalists and preppers and stuff like that, and then tweaking it for me, for my wife, for my kids when they were younger, now tweaking it for my kids that are older, married, and we have grandkids, okay? So it's just, it's constantly being uh, tweaked here and there. That's why I say that you always also have to have a schedule of inventory, all right? Or an inventory schedule, however you wanna put it. It should be on your calendar. If you have a guy like me and still have hard copies, paper calendars, write it in. I also put it in my phone. You can put it in your phone too. You know, and always have it so that there's a reminder, maybe a week out or a couple of days out or both, because you'll see it, your phone will go ding. You'll go, oh, yeah, I got to do that. Sometimes you need a couple more reminders on what you're going to do. But these lists are very specific to you. OK, and what we're going to talk about today, and it kind of says in the, in the title, medical must haves full kit full blown out kit um you know and i'm going to give you these and they're in no specific order and it's going to be a long list okay it's not going to be hours don't get me wrong it's not going to be an hour it's going to be less than a half hour probably less than 20 minutes if i keep talking um about this list okay uh at the end stick to the end i've got a bonus list for you which i think you're really gonna like um uh i'll give you a hint on on the, the bonus list, it's uh, basically, no, nah, I'm not going to give you any. Uh, you'll know what it is right off the bat if I give you any kind of a hint. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over these medical must-haves. Now, like I said, it's a long list. It's very, you know, thorough, very encompassing. But look at the world today, okay? Um, even if we don't physically go to war, okay, because of Hamas and Israel and Hezbollah uh, and the Islamic Jihad and Iran and all the other countries that may or may not get involved, what we saw during World War II was rationing. Rationing where you couldn't get certain things, all right, or you had to have coupons to be able to get certain things. Um, but if you have this stuff up front, and if you saw my video, uh, and you can look at look back on it um, about uh, expiration dates. Expiration dates on everything or best buy dates or use by dates. Really, there's only one or two items that it really makes a difference. And one is antibiotic. That's why you really have to keep on top of your antibiotics. And when you go buy antibiotics in the store or anything, don't grab the one in the front. If you know anybody that's been in the grocery business, as they stock the shelves, the old stuff comes to the front, the new stuff goes in the back, okay? And if you're talking stuff that's got a couple years of shelf life, now we're not talking about the extra shelf life that come in different types of cans and stuff like that, but they're putting maybe stuff in the back that has six months more than the stuff in the front. So why not do that? Why not reach to the back and get what you need? Now, if you use it every day, like, you know, soup or butter or whatever like that, you know, it's, it's not going to make a big deal. It really isn't. 
But some of this stuff that might, you know, you might need for, you know, you might not use the whole thing. Maybe it comes with 24 tabs or, you know, or liquid gels and stuff like that. Watch the date and just know that the stuff lasts longer than its best buy date. Okay, best buy is 100% potency. Everything's great. If you go a little bit further than that, a year, two years, sometimes up to five, seven years beyond the date, uh, which the military did studies on, not only medicine, but on can life, uh, they'll tell you that some of this stuff can last up to 25 years beyond the best buy date. Okay, there's not an end date, it's a best buy date. Now, granted, like I just said, some of the potency may go down, but when you can't get it, do you really care that you only have 80% of your potency left? No, you don't, you know, as long as you've got something. So let's go through this list real quick. Um, so right off the bat, I've got antibiotics. Absolutely, number one, must have antibiotics, which has long shelf life dates on it. So when you go out and you buy it and you grab it, the first box, and it says, huh, February 2024. Well, February 2024 isn't that far out. Dig into the back. Maybe it says February 2025. Grab that, you know, and rotate it. Get your other stuff out of here um, and uh, go from there. You know what I'm saying? All right. Alcohol preps and hand sanitizer. Very important. Band-Aids. All different kinds of band-Aids. Because if you look at what killed people before antibiotics and you know, uh, and uh, sterile dressing and stuff like that, it was infection, all right? Band-Aids, even without the antiseptic, if you wash it good, it's gonna keep crap from getting into your wound, all right? Steri strips or butterfly sutures, which are really good. Um, Over-the-counter pain medications, all kinds, all kinds. For me, it's like Aleve works good for some things, but Tylenol works better for other things. Headaches, pain muscle aches and stuff like that. So just, you know, you know what you need, you know what your family needs. I would get them all. Antacids, cough medicines and cold medicines. Nothing makes me more miserable than a stupid old everyday cold. But if I got some good uh, cold medicine, I'm happy. If it clears up my nasal passages, I got some nasal spray, clears it up. Don't share it. I have enough for everybody, all right? Um, Tape, medical tape, duct tape, duct, duct tape works great to cover up a wound, a large cut, and hold it together so it doesn't separate more or doesn't rip more. It's going to be a bitch getting it off, but you know what? It's going to protect that wound until you can get someplace and get proper medical care or give yourself proper medical care. Like I said, this list is in no specific order, okay? All right, quick clot gauze. I would use quick clot gauze over uh, a quick clot compound because that quick clot compound is going to get into the wound. Then you're going to have to dig it out. Okay, but quick clot gauze is just going to get the clot quicker and not go into the wound. All right, anti-diarrhea medication. Anybody that's had diarrhea, you know how dehydrated you get. You know how horrible it is. All right, you know that you can't get 50 feet from a bathroom, all right? Anti-diarrhea medicine is really important. Allergy medication, if you have allergies, if not, have some on hand. Just have it around. Personal medications, if you can afford it, go beyond what your insurance company will pay for and get a complete supply. Rotate it, all right? Buy that complete supply of what you need a month, two months, three months, whatever you can afford and then rotate. But just remember to have your medication on auto refill, all right, and keep up with your, your doctor to keep those other prescriptions coming. Uh, antihistamine tabs kind of goes along with the, with the allergy stuff. Hydrocortisone and skin cream for itches. If you're out, uh, there's bug bites, there's poison ivy, there's poison oak, there's everything that can drive you crazy. Them little bitty no seeing bugs that bite and then it hurts, but with a good hydrocortisone cream or a skin cream, that pain goes away uh, right off the bat. This is not a medication, but 
I have found for bee stings, you can get commercial grade stuff. Ice is all you need. Put some good ice on that right away. It shows the area. It slows down how fast that venom goes into your veins. And before you know it, you know, you don't even know that you got stung. At least that's how it works for me. Um, aloe and calamine, absolutely. Sunburn, whatever. Petroleum jelly. Cover wounds. All right. Stuff works great. Sterile water for flushing. Yes, for flushing wounds, stuff in your eyes and stuff like that. You need to have a couple bottles of that. Eye wash, if you can get eye wash, because eye wash has a salt solution based on what our bodies normally have. So, you know how if you put regular water into your eyes, sometimes uh, it just like dries them out and then you have to put drops in and also eye drops. Eye drops are absolutely fantastic. Disposable thermometers, okay? You need to keep track of your temperature, okay? Whether you've got the flu, an infection, uh, whatever. Splints, various size splints are always nice to have. A first aid guide. First aid guide is gonna help you so much because you can't remember everything, okay? Um, we've talked about this as a video on the dental kit. You definitely want to put together a dental kit, all right? Even if Nothing's going on here. You ever try to get a dentist appointment right off the bat? No. You ever try to get any kind of appointment right off the bat? No. But if you had this dentist dental kit, it might save you a lot of pain and sleepless nights until you get in, can get into the dentist. All right. A couple other things that you want to put with this list. Um, and I know some of the stuff that I'm going to tell you uh, is redundant from your other kits. But we're talking a knife. A scissors, clippers, multi-tools, and tweezers. Goes without saying. Tweezers, um, a multi-tool. So you can pull out. Like when a bee stings you, you want to get that little sack and that stinger out. If you get a thorn in your, you got to pull it out. If you've got um, splinters, you want to get them out. That's why you should always have gloves. Always, always. Don't give me this. I'm a man. I want callousy fingers and stuff like that. If your hands are trashed, you're done. You can't do anything, okay? I got years of experience trashing my hands working for a tent company using a sledgehammer putting stakes in the ground. Thousands of stakes into the ground. Big wooden stakes. I know how fast you can mess up your hands. A uh, headlamp and flashlight because you know what? It's not going to be a sunny, beautiful afternoon when somebody gets hurt or you get hurt and you need to do some kind of medical care. It's going to be in the middle of the night. It's going to be windy. It's going to be rainy. You can't see anything. All right. You need a headlamp, which is absolutely fantastic. Flashlight is good, too. You can always get one of these babies right here to give you a full array of uh, a lantern. It's a full array of um, light extra batteries, lots of extra batteries and survival blankets because whoever gets hurt could be going in the shock, could again be rainy and shitty outside, windy and cold and just nasty. And you want to wrap them up in that blanket. You want to wrap yourself up in that blanket. All right. What else you want to carry? You don't want to have with you sunblock, bug spray or lotion, cold and hot packs, sterile needle and silk for sewing up. If you ever saw the Rambo movie, you know what I'm getting at. Surgical blades are very, very important. Uh, we used to have a guy, his name was his uh, name was Dave, and we'd get big, I mean big honking slivers in our fingers, uh, in the palms of our hands from uh, working with the wood, with the tents, uh, with Fox Tent and Awning back in, in, in Arbor, Michigan. And he would basically just grab your hand, put it under his arm like this, and he would he would hold you down, and he would take a very fine surgical blade and just slice your finger nice. You don't even feel it. It's such a perfect slice right over the top of the sliver, in with some tweezers, out, antiseptic, Band-Aid, get back to work. All right? It's very, very important. Um, Safety pins and bandanas. You hurt your arm, you want to wrap that thing up, you're going to need safety pins to put it together. Okay, safety pins uh, for maybe putting, you know, um, gauze 
or and, uh, elastic bandages. You should have elastic bandages on hand. That goes along with splints, like I said before. All right, a couple things. As we go now, some of this stuff you're going to need possibly need extra training with. Okay, very easy. You go to YouTube, see the websites. Some of the stuff you need to see medical professionals to learn how to do this stuff. Paramedics, EMTs, doctors, ER docs, nurses. Nurses are absolutely fantastic for this stuff because they're the ones doing it. it ain't the docs? It's the nurses doing the work. All right. Let's face it. All right. CPR mask, Israeli bandages, tourniquets, gloves, goes without saying, mask, N95, American-made, no knockoff, uh, Pakistani or Chinese or Korean, N95, made in America, the good stuff. Okay, and that could be for anything. I'm not talking for pandemic. I'm talking for, for dust and pollution and uh, pollen and, you know, all the big stuff. Um, uh, chest seal. You got to learn how to use the chest seal though. Soap. You got to have soap just like you're going to have, uh, you know, your, um, antiseptic lotion. And what else did I say? What was that? Uh, hand sanitizer and alcohol preps. You want to have soap. Okay. But you know, and more water. IV supplies don't have them unless you or somebody else is trained. Okay. Um, very easy to be trained. I've been trained. I continue being trained from my uh, my son and daughter-in-law. Uh, my son's a critical care medic and teaches paramedics and EMTs. And my daughter-in-law is a fantastic ER nurse. Okay, and does it all does this stuff all the time. They're great people. Um, and a pen and paper to keep track of items that you used, and sometimes the time you did it. Uh, a marker is great. If you're going to put a tourniquet on somebody, you're going to take a marker, something that can't come off in the rain, and you're going to write across their forehead what time you put the tourniquet on. Because you can't leave that tourniquet on forever. Okay? It's got to be released at some point. Very slowly, but it has to be released for blood flow for whatever appendage uh, that was severed or whatever or cut severed you're not going to open it right away all right so what can you use this all this items for well you're going to use it in for home you're going to have major supply at home your bug out bag your trauma kit your vehicle or carry first aid kit or single or multiple patients that's another thing when you pack up your bags you're not going to have one patient okay you have to think of multiples always think of multiples now you could have a great supply bag at home but your kit that you're carrying with you your everyday carry uh, your vehicle first aid kit. Assume multiple patients always. Always assume multiple patients because if you only got enough for one or two, you're going to feel really bad that, well, I'm sorry, but you two have to bleed out because I don't have any more supplies. Now, if you get a busload of people and they're all bleeding out, you can't do anything about that. Go to your, you know, but you have to be able uh, to take care of multiple patients. All right. Inventory often, like I told you, schedule an inventory. If you take something out of your kit for whatever reason, okay, because you're at soccer and the, the kit was AYSO didn't have any cold packs or they were all bad, you've got a cold pack, write it down that you used it, make sure you, you finish. Okay, so I keep a supply of all these things at home because like, yeah, let's go back to this. There is um, supply chain issues. There is war in the making. There is uh, factories that uh, have issues and have to shut down and recall stuff. There are warehouse fires. There are vehicle and truck accidents that stuff doesn't always make it to the store. You want to have a complete supply of all this stuff just in case you are prepping for a disaster. Okay. Again, I would never carry all of this, but I would have it on hand. A lot of the stuff, you have to decide what you're going to put in your everyday carry emergency kit, your vehicle first aid kit, or your trauma kit. You have to decide what you're going to put in there. Um, you know, and how important is this stuff? You know, and if you go, uh, after you watch this video, you can go to our playlist. We have a kit playlist and suggestions and stuff like that. And it's all in there. We have lists, playlists, 
and stuff. Um, I will also post this list along with the one I'm going to give you in a second on Facebook, just like I did with the, uh, the other items. I will post that. Um, but again, you're going to have to determine what's necessary for you, what's necessary for your family, what your family needs, what their medical needs are. Um, just like when you do uh, inventory, or not inventory, but stockpiling. What do you like to eat? You're not going to buy a bunch of crap that nobody likes just because it was on sale. That doesn't make any sense. No, they're hungry. They'll eat it anyhow. No, they won't. No, they won't. I'm telling you. Try feeding a kid no matter how hungry they are, something they don't like. It don't work. All right? Um, so you have to decide, okay, and determine what you need and what's readily available in your area. Let's say there's an item that you need that you can't get in the stores very often. You only find it every once in a while. When you find it, it's the time to buy it, all right? We all know this because you go back to the store, crap, it's gone. I did that with popcorn balls the other day. Went to Walgreens, shopping with the kids at school, and I saw popcorn balls. I went, no, I don't have time for that. I'm not buying them now. Came back after school. They're gone. Yeah. I said to the manager who I know is Tim. I said, Tim, you just had a whole bunch of popcorn balls over here. He says, yeah, one person came in and bought them all because they're having a party. Damn. All right. Get kind of long on this video. So let's go into this. Here's the bonus list. 10 non-food and non-water items everyone should have. Think of your everyday carry bag plus, okay? So here they are. Real quick, I'll put this list again uh, on Facebook. Gloves. I tell you time and time again, gloves, 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 gloves. Because you can't do shit if your hands are messed up, all right? Sometimes your hands get wet and cold. You can't do it. You can't close your hands, all right? It's wet. Everything slips. Gloves, 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 all right? Socks. If your feet sweat or your feet get cold in the winter, socks and liners. Two pair. I have two pair in all my bags. All right. Headlamp and flashlight with extra batteries. Good hiking or walking boots in your vehicle. Because if you're a salesman and you're walking around uh, with really nice shoes and something happens, you get four foot of snow and you got to walk home. Good luck, buddy. I sure as hell wouldn't be doing it in uh, my loafers. All right? Think about that. My wife used to work downtown Chicago. Do you think she wore her fancy shoes that she had to wear for Northern Trust in the professional division? Do you think she wore those on the train? Hell no. She had boots in the winter. She had gym shoes in the summer for back and forth. All right. Um, knife and multi-tool. Both. All right? Small first aid kit. Everybody should have a small first aid kit, bar none. I don't care if you want to add to it or not. Small first aid kit, you know what you need, what people use every day. All right. Matches and a fire started. starter. Fire starter is very, very important. I don't care if you use flint and steel. I don't care if you use some kind of a chemical uh, stick, but you need to have a good fire starter. Emergency blankets go without saying. We talked about that before. Cash, gold, or silver. Cash is always good to have. I use it all the time. Sometimes I don't have enough, so I go to my everyday carry. I've got about $100 in different denominations in there. I also have a couple gold, uh, silver bars, which are uh, an ounce. I also have fractional gold in there. I don't know what's going to happen, where I'm going to be. Can I get back? I carry that stuff with me at all times. All right. A life straw. If you don't have a life straw in your everyday carry kit or in your car or whatever, you're a complete fool. Water. You can go days without food, but you can't go hours without water, especially in a stressful situation. All right. Those are the 10. But let's talk about some bonus things on there. A compass. You should always have a compass, no matter where you are, to figure out where you are and know how to use it. Firearm and ammo. If you're licensed, if you have to have a license in your state, get that license. Um, if you don't live in that state, find out uh, if you're a constitutional carry state, can I carry in a state that requires it? If not, do I need to get a license or maybe I can't carry it all in that state? And there's an old adage with that. Um, I heard a guy saying, you know, I always carry no matter where I go. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because I would rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6. Toilet paper. Always good. You don't need a lot. Just enough. Duct tape and zip ties. Fantastic to have. And maybe like some of that green uh, art wire is always good to have. Some type of shelter. A stove. Right there. Jet boils. We love those to have them around. Some type of tools and cards, books, and games. Because let's face it. If you're stuck somewhere, it's not going to be, you know, worrying about food and water and stuff like that all the time. You need something to keep yourself occupied, the kids occupied or whatever. Um, you know, this is a lot of stuff. Um, and you have to decide to you how you're going to carry it. You need, you know, we have several vehicle kits, everyday vehicle kit. We have a going to grandma's vehicle kit. Um, we also have a, I'm on vacation for two weeks and I'm nowhere near home and I don't know what I can get, where I'm going kit. They have a lot, lot more stuff in it. Like I said, you should have all these medical, all this medical stuff at home because you don't know supply chain issues, war. Uh, if we get into war, all bets are off because a lot of that stuff, um, you're not going to be able to get, uh, heard a, uh, a couple of things the other day that, um, uh, uh, Lake City has increased their uh, primer um, manufacturing. Hmm, I wonder why. And I also heard that, uh, and that's a rumor, I also heard that the government has told Lake City no more uh, cancel all civilian orders. I don't know. So we'll talk about that in the, in the next video that's coming up, along with a couple other firearm items. But that's it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate y'all. Uh, please pass this on to everybody. Like I said, this, this list is going to be um, on Facebook in the next couple of days. Uh, if you have any comments on this vid, uh, video, please make comments. If you have some other medical stuff that you would like to share with the other people that watch this video, please comment on that too. If you thought this video sucked, tell me it sucked or it didn't make any sense or you couldn't hear me or whatever. I'm trying to talk louder. Um, you know, if you want to see more videos from me, let me know what kind of videos you want. I've made videos for people because they've asked me to, you know, because they weren't sure. So I've made videos. Um, and please subscribe. Uh, comments are more important than subscriptions to me. But please subscribe. Pass this on to friends of yours um, that might be interested and have them subscribe. Hey, subscribe the dog, too. Why not? You know, and have the dog uh, send me a comment. That'd be that'd be awesome. Send me a picture of the dog. I love dogs. Um, as we always say at the end of our video, always be aware of your surroundings, which is another video coming up. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by always be aware of your surroundings in a video or two from now. Um, always be prepared to be on your own for up to 72 hours. Always be prepared to have food, water, medicine, ammunition. If you're going to shelter in place for three, six, nine months, if you're bugging out at least 72 hours to get you where you need to get going. And don't forget when you get there, before you leave, think about the situation in where you're getting there because you might need better clothes, warmer, colder clothes or whatever. And please, please prep like your life depends on it because it really does. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Thank you for watching the whole video. We'll see you next time.